Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Kittens. In our video today, we'll be discussing one of the most important piece of equipment available on board in cases of emergency such as firefighting, enclosed space rescue, etc. That is the self-contained breathing apparatus. A self-contained breathing apparatus, as the name suggests, is a device that provides a self-contained method of external breathing aid to somebody who is responsible either for emergency operations or is the subject of a particular rescue operation or an emergency situation. So now imagine a situation where there is a fire on board in a particular section or a particular compartment. For the firefighting staff or the team of the firefighters to enter into that space, it is important that they do not rely on the atmospheric gases available within that area. So in such a situation, it becomes essential that a device such like the self-contained breathing apparatus is used that can provide the firefighters with breathable air for a stipulated period of time to ensure that the firefighting task is carried out safely. In the similar way, if there are emergency rescue operations that are needed to be carried out in an enclosed space, the self-contained breathing apparatus will be used by the rescue personnel to make sure that if there are any toxic or hazardous gases available in the vicinity, they are not inhaled by the rescue personnel and also the casualty count does not increase. So, now that we know what is the role of the SCBA, it is also important to understand that because of this critical nature, the SCBA is also a regulated set of equipment, which means that SOLAS Chapter 2, Part 2 and Regulation 10 regulates everything regarding the SCBA on board and suggests that every firefighter should have a firefighting outfit which must include an SCBA with itself as a mandatory equipment for external breathing aid and these SCBA must also have a spare charge cylinder available. It also suggests that every passenger and cargo ship depending upon its size must have sufficient number of firefighting outfits and thus sufficient number of SCBAs and spare charges available on board. It is also important to know within this regulation that each SCBA must have at least 1200 liters of capacity and a pressure of 200 bar at the optimum working capacity at least. Also, each SCBA must be fitted with an audible alarm and these alarm must go off or indicate an emergency situation normally at 35% or lesser of the working capacity of the SCBA. These SCBAs are available in places which are easily accessible, for example, the emergency locker or the firefighter's locker which is available on board in designated areas and the spare charges are also available in the common and accessible places and can also be available in a segregated space at the bridge and amongst these would also be the charges which are used for training purposes and also on board, you will have an SCBA compressor which can be used efficiently to refill the SCBA bottles and the spare charge bottles that are available on board and all these must always be kept up in a pressed up condition to make sure that we can easily address any situation of emergency on board. So, having understood thus far about the requirement of SCBA and also the regulation that dictates this, now, we also need to understand the construction of the SCBA before we move on towards how do we use it. So, the self-contained breathing apparatus in a nutshell contains first of all this cylinder which is typically a 6 litre design and stores the necessary amount of air in compressed form. So, there would definitely be a pressure gauge which will indicate the pressure within the cylinder and would have two zones that is the optimum working zone and also the alarm zone and the space in between which can entirely be regarded for workable conditions. From the cylinder, we will have the cylinder connector and the cylinder wall. So, the cylinder wall is the one which is responsible for letting the supply of air into the further network that is the further piping and the assembly. From here, the air would further move on and go into the pressure reducing wall through the piping and within this pressure reducing wall, the pressure which was stored in the cylinder would then be reduced to an operable range and that can be easily used for breathing purposes within the mask. Once the air moves forward through the piping, it then goes to the demand air wall hose and then gets directed towards the demand wall. This demand wall is the one which is responsible for supplying the breathable air under the demand position and from there we have the positive pressure air mask. 
So now as we can see that this becomes the entire breathing assembly but also we need to have a securing assembly that is measures to secure this entire network onto the body of the personnel. So for that we have the adjustable harness which wraps around your shoulder and also around your waist and tucks in with the help of claps and also with the help of harness we can also adjust the tightness by pulling onto the straps and making sure that the SCBA is fastly secured to your body. It is important to understand that over here the two important parts one is the pressure reducing wall and one is the alarm whistle. So the pressure reducing wall is nothing but a normal reducing wall in which you have the philosophy of low cross section and high cross section and thus when air flows through it then like a restricted passage it would diverge towards the other opening and thus create a simultaneous pressure drop and it would allow for the air to go from high pressure to low pressure and similarly the whistle is nothing but a seating type diaphragm wall with a non return assembly so what it does is that on one side it has the spring loaded diaphragm assembly and until the pressure inside the network is adequate both of them are in equilibrium condition and the alarm will not go off. But as we discussed earlier that when the air pressure in the network drops below that 35% range the spring pressure would exert a higher pressure on the diaphragm and push it and that means a very small gust of air would release from it through the whistle mechanism thus creating an audible whistle and letting the operator know that the air pressure for the SCBA is falling below the safe range that they would want to operate in. Now imagine as a firefighter or as a rescue personnel you want to wear this SCBA and secure it onto your body in a steadfast manner. So first of all we would don the SCBA and secure the vertical as well as the horizontal straps and lock them in place and make sure that the straps are tightened and the SCBA is not hanging loosely. Now before proceeding forward we would make sure that the mask is in a ready state for wearing and then don the mask. Once we are donning the mask we have to make sure before that the demand air valve hose is in a state where it is not entangled or it has no blockages in the passage and upon donning the mask we will tighten the straps by pulling them subsequently. After that we will release the air with the help of the cylinder wall and as soon as we do that the pressure gauge with the air passing through the pressure reducing wall after that would start showing the pressure in the line. Once that is ready over here we will have the demand wall with the help of which we can then breathe air on a demand and supply basis and we will have the exhaling or the breathing out mechanism which will be available for us to allow the breath to go out. Similarly. Once the mask is donned we can also make sure by switching the regulator on the demand wall side to make sure that the air supply can be in a always positive manner also. So for example if I am going into an area which I suspect to be toxic instead of keeping the supply on a demand basis where I breathe and only then the air gets pulled in I can make sure that my face mask compartment is always positively pressurized even though that means higher usage of air but that can be done by changing over the regulator and that is also called as the positive pressure orientation within the SCBA. After that once we have visibly checked that everything is good to go and there is nothing that is interrupting our operation we can proceed with the task in hand for example whatever the firefighting or the rescue operation we have in hand. Now as we have already understood that the SCBA always needs to be in a condition of excellent maintenance. So under normal routines it is important to understand that we need to carry out different tests on the SCBA. So among them we will have to carry out a number of tests on the face mask that is the positive pressure air mask within which we will have to check the tightness of the flaps and the straps and we put it on our face and without switching on the cylinder wall or the demand wall we first try to suck in air. So whatever limited quantity of air is in that area that will get sucked in and then it will create vacuum. Once it creates vacuum no gush of air should enter inside from the side areas and that means our mask is sealing properly. Similarly our adjustable harness should always be in a kink free condition and should not have any points of weakness such as breakages or loose threads etc and should have clamps that strap on immediately and in a steadfast manner and should not be loose. Our cylinder should not have any internal or external damage and should be pressure tested on the decided interval and also the interval should be stamped on the bottle plus also the date of last inspection should also be stamped. 
it is worth mentioning that the pressure within the air bottle should always be in the adequate condition and that means it should be periodically charged and upon charging you can check it on the pressure gauge. There is also a method for testing the whistle and for doing that what we do is that we first let the cylinder valve open without actually donning the mask and it will pressurize the line but the air is not going out anywhere right now. Then what we'll do once the line is pressurized we'll close the cylinder valve again. Now on the pressure gauge we can see that the pressure is right then either we can let it fall by itself or we can also breathe a little bit by putting on the mask temporarily. What it will then do is it will just breathe out the air that is in the line and that means the pressure will drop fast and to a value below the alarm level. So then the alarm whistle will get triggered because of it and this can be done as the alarm or the whistle test for the SCBA. I hope that a descriptive understanding of the SCBA has helped you and if you still have any possible questions on this topic, please feel free to let us know in the comment section and we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you.